Hello and welcome back to another episode of Psykin Guides. Today we are coming back with yet another 10 tips that I wish I had known when starting XCOM 2, third installment of the series of 10 tips that you should know. I'm always trying to uh, come up with content which transports a lot of knowledge in a short amount of time for those of you who really want to just get the main info and keep it going and the 10 tips that I wish I knew kind of serious is aiming to do exactly that. So without further ado, let's jump into today's 10 tips that I wish I knew before starting XCOM 2. All right, and it wouldn't be a 10 tips video if I wouldn't have brought a friend of mine. Today it is Avatar Joe who is sharing his thought on the matters in true fashion. We're starting with a PsyOps tip in tip number one, Stasis and Void Rift. Might be trivial, but most of you might not immediately know that Stasis and Void Rift actually do not end your turn. What does that mean? Action economy in a tactical game like XCOM 2 is incredibly important, so that in itself means that a Psy operative does have a great deal of actions that they can do on a repetitive basis. So for instance, think about the first two rounds of a battle. Uh, round number one, we're starting with a stasis into a wonderful null lens, taking one out, killing a couple of them. Round number two, we're then following up with a void rift, just destroying uh, the remainders of the enemies and on top of that then a mind control into one of the remaining enemies. That sounds like an incredibly threatening combination of uh, abilities. So. Psy operatives, if you can position them in a static manner, can continue to rain down chaos on the enemies. That's tip number one. Which neatly brings us to tip number two. Let's take a look at the overpowered ability from the Psy operative fortress. It, in my opinion, is one of the strongest, if not the strongest single ability in the game because it immunizes yourself against a lot of nasty stuff fire poison, even frozen where there is no other immunity. And on top of that, it makes you immune against explosions, which many people do not appreciate as much. Um, explosions allows the Psy operative, therefore, to just stand next to a gas station or an exploding purifier without so much of an afterthought because they are simply immune to it. However, there are, as always, exceptions to the rule that you should be aware of. The Blazing Pinions ability of the Archon as well as the Lightning Field ability of uh, the Sectopod. Both do neither count as any of the immunities nor as a typical explosion and therefore will not provide immunity. Pro tip on top of that as well, uh, shout out to the Chrysalid Poison which typically cannot easily be countered but Fortress will even counter that. Which neatly brings us to the third tip, uh, the training of Psy operatives and one of the things that many of you might not have encountered yet. Whilst Psy operatives are training, there is a known bug that has never been fixed. If you take a Psy operative onto a mission whilst they are training and they get injured at that mission or receive a panic or fear or whatever, and afterwards you're putting them into the clinic or trying to remove a negative trait whilst they are still occupying a slot in the training, then that training slot will forever be bugged. Not only can that uh, Psy operative never continue their training because officially they do have another ID uh, after they have uh, been healed slash uh, removed the uh, negative ability, but also you cannot put them out of the training, they it will be there in a perpetual state to uh, forever block the training and only one other Psy slot will be available. To make matters worse, you cannot simply demolish the uh, Psy operations facility as long as they are in use, so you actually uh, just screwed yourself. You should know that and you should know better. Let the Psy operatives uh, train in peace and once they're done, then you can take them on the mission and destroy everything. Tip number four will be the Psy operatives dominate ability. An iconic ability bar none, potentially second to none of their abilities and 
and also a problematic one. There are a couple of issues with Dominate that you should be aware of. Most noticeably, uh, the Dominate ability will last for the entirety of uh, the mission. However, there are, as always, a couple of exceptions. Number one, if Advent manages to disrupt your concentration via a flashbang, for instance, or via a stasis, then you will lose your dominate. Whilst you can immunize yourself against the flashbang by wearing a mind shield, pro tip, you should do that. You cannot do that against stasis because it simply takes you out. The moment that you are stasis, your domination will be broken and unfortunately you're not getting your cooldown back. It's just gone. Second info that you might not have been familiar with, if the mission includes a sector or a scenery change, such as the sarcophagus missions of the Chosen or such as Waterworld, then by switching the area, you will lose your dominated foe. That already worked in normal uh, vanilla XCOM, but they removed it with War of the Chosen. Tip number five. We're still sticking with the Psy operatives. Can you imagine? Tip number five, Psy operative null and stability. Well, you know, uh, Psy operatives are bar none uh, the strongest class in the game. So naturally they get five tips and null lens is a great tip. Null lens completely ignores cover and everything in a line will be hit, friend or foe that uh, includes what you may not have appreciated though is you don't need line of sight in order to do that. Have you ever seen a Psy operative just stand behind a wall completely out of line of sight while his Reaper friend is moving in, scouting out a pack and then whoopsie, a null lance hits the entire room um, or even better, whoopsie, a void rift hits uh, the room and then a null lance follows to just push off a couple of the stragglers. Yep, that is how strong Psy operatives can be if you play them correct. Bonus points if you are getting Psy operatives in the right position, mainly with uh, using the Templar switch ability, then you will enable them even better to not be attackable and deal full psionic damage. So if that isn't warming your heart, then I think I cannot really motivate you with any class in XCOM 2. All right, that brings us to tip number six, the sniper aim stacking. It's one of the things that I wanted to review for a while. It is a pretty nasty combination that you could do. See, the worst thing that could happen is enemies with defense that are in full cover. So the Andromedon is the worst offender of that. Typically you either have defense or cover, but Andromedon has both and a couple of other exceptions exist as well. So that is a problem for the sniper, but not if you are aim stacking. There are a couple of things that you can do in order to aim stack, in order to make your sniper hit 100% of the time guaranteed. Steady hands will give you a bonus if you haven't moved. If in War of the Chosen you also uh, skill hunker down, then that in itself will give you another aim bonus. Uh, add to that a scope uh, and the uh, superior perception PCS, then the alien ruler uh, weapon, not the alien uh, ruler DLC weapon, uh, the pistol that gives plus 10 aim, and all of a sudden you can reach without training far in excess of 160 aim with a full uh, loaded uh, sniper on kernel rank. Then, once you are ready and have everything together, and you might just get ready with a cereal or whatever else floats your boat, and you will be able to hit 100% everyone. No miss, no glancing shots, and nothing. You will just be a menace of society. And we're going directly to tip number seven, the specialist's Overwatch focus build. Covering fire, ever vigilant, and Guardian together are a devastating combination. Add the ability to get kill zone, add the ability to use threat assessment, and then go on Overwatch yourself to have a really superior experience. So if you ever have seen enemy pods land 
or knowing that there are going to be reinforcements coming in, how about trying the Overwatch build of the specialist? Give yourself threat assessment, use a, a, a kill zone, or just go into normal Overwatch if you don't have kill zone. And if you do have covering far ever vigilant guardian and the upgrade of the GTS, where you can even crit, then all of a sudden the sniper will react to every single action. They will get two sets of complete overwatch uh, shots and all of them have the potential to crit and spawn more overwatch shots. This combined with a repeater, superior repeater if possible, or just use the warlock's uh, weapon that does have a uh, built-in superior repeater, will decimate entire packs if you're kind of moderately lucky. On average, you will get with a kill zone and a threat assessment combination, at least six to eight uh, shots out of it. Uh, on average, with a normal uh, threat assessment plus overwatch, you will get at least three to four shots out of it making it a great combination and since all of uh, them typically uh, will hit with a good uh, specialist you will inflict a massive amount of damage which brings us to tip number eight the rangers shadow strike ability ever since war of the chosen has been released shadow strike as an ability hasn't been as much meta as it used to do because rangers are not scouting anymore but you shouldn't sleep on this ability because shadow strike actually works on the rangers sword attack even without concealment as long as the enemy cannot see you so if you're out of line of sight and uh, you want to try to hit enemies then shadow strike might be just for you because all of a sudden you get a crit and to hit a bonus um, extra info for that or extra benefit you can combine that with blade master and on top of it the legacy pack dlc does give you a curved blade uh, that allows the ranger to also get a slight hit chance bonus so all of that will give you 100 percent hit chance and if you combine all uh, together even a good chance uh, to hit most of your blade storm attacks so i hope that was helpful for you let's move on to tip number nine Tip number nine will look into the defense metrics. There's a lot to unpack here. One of my favorite uh, buildings for starters, many just ignore the building and then lose their campaign by ignoring it. It's one of the cheapest buildings. It doesn't cost a lot of uh, energy. It can be built ultra fast. So if you are in a tight spot, defense metrics might uh, so solve uh, the situation for you. On top of it, if you're expanding it, you get four turrets. On top of it, if you put an engineer into it, the turrets actually hit very hard and very well. They can be uh, quicker upgraded to plasma-like weapons than you can ever research plasma weapons yourself. Just a thought. On top of which, the defense turrets, and you might not know that, all do have squad side, which brings in a funny mechanic where when the Chosen has shot you down or when you have been shot down by a UFO, you just need to get a, a Ranger with concealment or a Reaper with their concealment right near the mission objective and then all of the turrets that do have line of sight can shoot at uh, either the uh, huge battery that is powering the gun of the chosen or the beacon that is preventing you from moving away both trivializing those missions quite handily on top of it each of the turrets do have two shots per round so you actually get eight really good shots against the enemy just by building that building and pro tip on top of it if you want to get really funky your own turrets not the ones that are uh, controlled uh, that was unfortunately patched in war of the chosen but the actual XCOM turrets can be swapped by the Pe templars uh, swap ability so if you feel like you need a little bit of a different angle there you go might want to check that out and finally tip number 10 in the true spirit of friendship we are looking at bonds did you know that bond level 2 gives the ability to counter mental effects for adjacency also known as the adjacency bonus yep many people don't really know that 
Uh, not only does bond level two already reduce the mission time of all covert action missions, which again is another pro tip, it also allows to move next to a bond mate and basically extinguish any mental effect. You might want to try that specifically with mind control. If you stand next to your buddy, all of a sudden the mind control is gone. Great way of regaining actions in a action economy focused game. So that's it. That's all I had for today. Lots and lots of tips. I hope they were valuable for you. Let me know in the comments down below which of the tip uh, was new for you or which of the ones was most helpful. And if you want to do me a favor, consider dropping a like bomb because that will propel those videos for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot and have a great day, guys. Take care. Bye bye.